Hey everybody and welcome to Flight Test. I'm John Overstreet and today we're going to be building the Flight Test P-38 Lightning. Guys, this is the one that I've been waiting for. You may not know this, but the P-38 was actually the second Master Series airplane that was designed, but it's been sitting on the back burner for quite some time. There was some question whether or not this should actually be released due to its complexity, but after looking at the planes that you guys have been building on the forums and social media, I have no doubt that you're going to be able to not only build this, but hit it out of the park. If you've already built other Master Series airplanes, you're going to notice that there are some similarities between other aircraft and the P-38. That said, because of the P-38 shape, there are a couple steps and a couple techniques that are going to be new. The P-38, I feel, really pushes the limit of what foam is actually able to do. The booms especially, they require foam to be rolled tighter than on any other aircraft that I've done. The fit between the boom and the wings is also a pretty interesting fit that requires the foam to be reinforced. As with all flight test planes, the P-38 is going to be available as a free download or as a speed build kit. If you choose to support flight test by purchasing a speed build kit, there's definitely some advantages. First of all, everything is precision laser cut. You don't have to worry about parts not fitting because they're not cut out correctly. Also, all parts are included that are needed to build this aircraft, minus the electronics. And last, all the speed build kits are cut from flight test water resistant foam. This is a huge advantage if you like to fly in the early morning or get out right after it rained. I know anytime it's rained, I'm always looking forward to getting out and flying. If you choose to take advantage of the free download, I want to recommend Adams Foam Board over Elmer's or Ross. There's a couple things about Adams Foam Board that makes it especially suitable for building these particular aircraft. Number one, it's slightly pliable and not brittle like the competitors. If you have a brittle foam, you're never going to be able to get the same shape that you get with the Atoms. Second of all, it's lightweight. You don't want an aircraft that's weighed down by unnecessary weight. An Atoms Ready Board is available everywhere. Hobby stores, craft stores, and dollar stores. One last thing, be watching for the all new white water resistant makers foam from Flight Test. This stuff is going to be a game changer. If you like painting aircraft, you're going to love this stuff. Also, Monster Foam. Monster Foam is almost here. And Monster Foam means that you can take this aircraft or any other flight test aircraft, blow it up about 185%, and you are going to have a giant aircraft that flies great. So enough for me. Go ahead and grab your kit, supplies, get lots and lots and lots of masking tape. You're going to need it. Let's get to building. Let's begin by building the main wing. The main wing consists of two upper wing skins, two lower wing skins, two wooden spars, and four foam spars. The reason I like starting with the main wing is that the method we use to form the airfoil is the same method we use to roll the fuselage. That said, the airfoil on the wing requires a minimal amount of shaping compared to the shaping required on the fuselage. By starting out with a nice gentle curve, this will help you get the feel for shaping foam. Go ahead and move the wing skins and wooden spars off to the side. We're gonna go ahead and glue up the foam wing spars. I've got a razor blade that I have taken and rubbed on concrete on both sides. I've put a piece of blue tape on there and this works really well for going down the scores. Using your dulled razor blade, go ahead and go down each score on each of these spars. Going down the scores with a dulled razor blade or credit card makes it easier to pull out this center section. Once you've gone down each of the scores, go ahead and break the spar open like this. And we're gonna go ahead and tear out this center section. Go ahead and do that on the remaining three. Once the centers are pulled out of the spars, we're gonna go ahead and glue things together. Before we glue though, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this up. You'll notice that I'm making a C fold. And the reason this is called a C fold 
because when it's folded up, you can see this outer paper forms a letter C. We're going to put a bead of glue all the way down this center channel. I am going to start about a half inch from the end here and end about a half inch from the end here. That way we don't have glue shooting out of the ends where we can get burned. In addition to putting a bead of glue down the middle, I'm also going to run a bead of glue all the way down one of the spars. I'm using a moderate bead of glue. This will give me a lot of time to get everything positioned correctly. Let this cool down for a full minute before you go on to the next one. Follow the same process on the remaining three. Go ahead and move these spars off to the side and we're going to go ahead and grab the lower wing skins. Let's start by gluing the two together. First thing I'm going to do is check for a test fit. Hey, okay, that looks good. And I'm going to take one of my wooden spars and I'm going to put it underneath one of the sides. The reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to glue these two together and I want to leave a space between the bottom of the wing and the table so the wing doesn't get stuck to the tabletop. Run a very heavy bead of glue right down the edge. And then stick the one side to the other. Let this cool down for about a minute and a half. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and move your wooden spar. And we're going to remove four of these little rectangles from each side of the wing. Two of them are located near the center, and two of them are located near the end. I'm using a barbecue skewer, and I've got the dull end, and I'm going to go ahead and dig these out. If you don't get every little piece out, don't worry about it. We're going to be filling these cavities with glue, and any small amount of foam will melt away once the glue gets put in. I do the same thing on the other side. Once that's completed, we're going to go ahead and cut out this rectangle here and then this small rectangle here. I'll do the same on the other side. With that complete, go ahead and grab your foam spars. Go ahead and lay them out like I've got here. You'll notice that the tabs are facing the center, and you'll notice that the tabs are down against the lower wing skin. Let's go ahead and do a test fit. These tabs, of course, are going to go in these cavities. That looks good. Go ahead and pull it back out. You're going to fill each cavity with glue. Once you do that, go ahead and apply a heavy bead of glue to the bottom of the spar. Hold this spar in place for a full minute and a half while the glue cools down. Now we'll do the same on the rear spar. I'm going to start with the test fit first. That looks good. Now we're going to do the same on the other side. Just like before, we've got the tabs facing one another and the tabs are against the lower wing skin.
Once that's cooled down, we're going to go ahead and install the wooden spars. The first wooden spar is going to go towards the leading edge. And what I'm going to do is line up this point with the center line where the two wings have been glued together. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to apply glue. You can see I'm using a really heavy bead of glue. Let that cool down for a full minute before doing the next one. Now we'll go ahead and install the rear wooden spar. I'm going to find my center point right there. Line it up to the center spot on the wing. Right, that looks good. And just like before, give that a full minute to cool down. Once that's cooled down, we're going to go ahead and bend the other side upwards until it matches the dihedral set by the spars. And I'm going to put a roll of tape on this side. A roll of tape will help hold things in place while we're gluing things together. So that looks good. I'm going to put a heavy bead of glue here and a heavy bead of glue here. Let that cool down for about a minute and a half. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and set your wing assembly off to the side and grab one of your upper wing skins. We're going to begin by tearing paper off of one side of the wing in order to ensure that the right side is removed. If you look at this line right here, you're going to see a score cut along the aileron. We want this facing upwards. If you look at the other side, you won't see a cut. So we want to tear the paper off that has this cut right here. Let's begin by removing paper near the aileron. Once we get to this cut, I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to lay it against the trailing edge of the wing. What I want to do is leave about an inch of paper along the trailing edge of the wing. So I'm holding my ruler down as I tear the paper away. Once the paper has been removed, go ahead and flip the wing upside down and fold the aileron all the way back. Go ahead and place a ruler about a quarter inch from the edge of the folded aileron like I've got here. We're going to go ahead and cut a bevel all the way along this edge. The way I like doing it, I like to hold a razor blade at about a 45 degree and then I rotate the razor blade about 45 degrees in the direction I'm going to be dragging it. And I draw it across using the ruler as a guide. There we go. It gives us a nice clean bevel. That allows the aileron to flex. Once you've cut the bevel, go ahead and run a heavy bead of glue all the way along the bevel. Using a piece of scrap, go ahead and remove the excess glue. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and create the airfoil. We're going to do that by rolling this over to the edge of a table. In order to form the airfoil, we're going to be placing both hands 
flat on the upper wing skin and we're going to be drawing the airplane backwards with a moderate amount of pressure. In order to determine how much pressure is needed, I'm going to show you approximately how much I start with. I'm going to press down. When I roll the wing over, you're going to see a small crease. That's a good place to start. You may need a little more, you may need a little less. This is something you just get the feel for. When forming up the airfoil, I'm going to start about two-thirds of the way from the leading edge. And I've got about two-thirds away from the leading edge on the wing tip as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to draw it backwards with moderate pressure over the edge of the table. Each time I draw it, I'm going to move my hands over just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and do it a second time. I'm going to go ahead and do it a third time. But instead of starting way back here, I'm going to start about here. Now with just a little bit of work, you can see that we've already created an airfoil. What we want before we install the upper wing skins to the lower wing skins is we want an exaggerated airfoil. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go back and work the leading edge, which is about here, and it tapers down all the way to the wing tip. So we're really going to take and we're going to curl this in an exaggerated fashion. Let's move it back to the edge of the table. So this time, instead of just drawing it down with both hands, I'm going to be bending the leading edge with my fingers. So watch for that as I do this. The leading edge likely won't be as smooth as this other area, so we're going to do this two or three times to kind of smooth everything out. So now you can see that this airfoil has really been exaggerated. I actually want it to be a little taller, so I'm going to go back and work things again, probably in, in this area. That looks good. Let's go ahead and do the other side. Just like on the first side, we're going to remove paper from one side, find the score, and go ahead and start removing the paper. Flip the wing white side down. Hold the aileron back. Position the ruler about a quarter inch from the edge. And cut your bevel. Fill that bevel full of glue. Wipe away the excess. Make sure the aileron stays open until the glue's had a chance to cool down. Now let's go ahead and add the airfoil. Just like before, we're going to put the edge of the table about two-thirds the way from the leading edge of the wing. And then just draw it down like we did on the other side. Now 
now that I've gone over it a couple times, I'm going to put the edge of the table about the midpoint from the leading edge on both sides and I'll draw it down like before. Now we're going to do the leading edge and as I draw down I'm also going to be bending the leading edge with my fingertips. Before we glue the upper wing skins in place, we're going to add a bevel along the leading edge of the wing. This will make a much better airfoil. You can see here that the edge of the paper is about an eighth of an inch from the tabletop. The bevel we're going to cut is going to allow the leading edge to almost touch the tabletop. Now you can see that the paper is just above the tabletop. That bevel looks good. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just like on the other side, we want to remove the gap between the edge of the paper and the tabletop. When I hold my eraser blade, it's as if it's parallel to the tabletop. So when I start my blade, and then I rotate up the cut, that's the correct position. As I'm cutting, I'm watching the edge of the razor blade to make sure it doesn't get into the paper. I think that edge looks really good now. Go ahead and grab your lower wing assembly and we're going to glue the upper wing skins in place. Let's start out with a test fit. Now I'm going to be aligning the leading edge of the upper wing skin and lower wing skin and that'll position the wing forward and backwards. There's a cutout at the center that'll help position the wings left and right. Once we've got position, there's one area in particular that I want to inspect and it's at the wing tip. I want to make sure that there is very little gap here at the wing tip. So it's got a slight amount of pressure and it looks like I'm good. If you've got a large gap right here, go ahead and roll the wing tip over the edge of the table until that gap is closed in. Once we've test fit the upper wing skin, we're going to go ahead and glue things in place. Make sure your glue gun has a full stick of glue for this step. If not, make sure you've got an extra glue stick handy. We're going to apply a heavy bead of glue along the top of both foam spars and we're going to apply a heavy bead of glue all the way down the leading edge of the wing. Be sure and use a lot of glue. This will ensure you have plenty of time to get the wing into position. Checking the leading edge of the wing. And I'm checking this notch right here. Everything seems lined up good. And then I'm just going to apply pressure as the glue cools. The wing tip at the leading edge is going to want to pop up, so make sure and watch this area very closely. Be sure and give this a full minute and a half to two minutes to cool. You don't want the wing skin to pop up. All right, now let's go ahead and do the other side. And just like before, we're going to line up the leading edge. And then I'm going to line up this notch here in the center. I'm go ahead and lay the wing down and I'm going to check for clearance issues right here. You can see that the wing skin isn't laying down quite right. So what I'm going to do is take a razor blade. And make a cut from the front to the back. Okay, I've got good alignment left and right. 
And I've got a good match along the leading edge. I'm going to go ahead and inspect the wing tip. And you can see that I've got a pretty good size gap right here. So before I glue this in place, I'm going to go ahead and roll this leading edge from the wing tip to about where this uh, aileron starts. And just like before, I'm going to use my fingertips to bend the leading edge down as I'm drawing it downward. Now let's check fit again. You can see that that gap is gone. That looks good. Let's go ahead and glue it in place. Again, we're going to add glue to the spars and to the leading edge. Be sure and have a full glue stick in your gun or one on standby. Once that cools, we're going to go ahead and close in the wingtips. To glue the wingtips, go ahead and tear off a couple pieces of tape. Now I'm going to flip the wing upside down. Now we're going to apply a small amount of glue along the edge of the wingtip. Put a bead of glue between the two layers of foam. Now holding the wing upside down, press the tip against the tabletop. And you'll want to hold it for about 45 seconds and then we can put a piece of tape in place. Now let's do the other side. Tear off a couple more pieces of tape. We're going to apply glue to the wing tip like we did on the other side. And press the wing tip to the table. That cool down for about 45 seconds and then you can tape it. While this seems a little bit awkward to do it this way, this will ensure that the wing tip looks really good and smooth. Now we're going to add a line of glue at the trailing edge of the wing. pinch it down and let it cool for about 45 seconds. And then we'll do the other side. Now that we've finished the main wing, let's move on to the canopy section. Go ahead and remove the following parts from your kit. You're going to need parts C1, C2, C3, and C4. Also remove parts P1 through P8. Make sure you've got all eight of them. There's a little one here. Don't want to forget that. You'll need two formers marked F1, two formers marked F2, four formers marked F3. There are also three unmarked parts. One of them shaped like the head of a spear. There's a very small pill-shaped piece. And then there's a battery box. This is different than the power pods you'll notice that the bottom of it is cut square. The power pods are cut at an angle. We're going to go ahead and start off with the main sections. These are the parts P1 through P8. Go ahead and set everything else off to the side. Go ahead and grab the part marked P5. And you're going to notice that there's a score running down the middle. Go ahead and break the part open and we're going to fill the channel with glue. And go ahead and lay that down flat. Now we're going to remove paper from one side of each of these parts. You're going to notice that one side has a number and letter designation and the other side doesn't. We're always going to want to remove the paper from the side with the designation. So let's go ahead and do that.
Now that the paper's been removed, we're gonna go ahead and start forming up each of these parts. Let's go ahead and start with P1. I'm gonna put it over the edge of the table like this. And I'm gonna draw it over the table and you can see how I'm twisting it. I'm gonna go over each side about four or five times and then spin it around. These edges seem to be coming together really nicely. What I'm looking for is for these edges to come together perfectly flush. I don't want them like this. They need to come together flush. So if you're, having, if you're having a hard time getting this shape, go ahead and just roll things a little bit more. The more you work this, the more pliable the foam will be. Okay, that looks good. Now we're gonna glue it together. Before I glue it though, I'm gonna tear off a small piece of tape. And I'm gonna apply a heavy bead of glue along one side. When I stick the two halves together, the paper on this side is going to overlap the paper on this side. That way the glue will squirt towards the inside. Go ahead and hold this for about a minute and then you can put a piece of tape across it. Once that's done, let's go ahead and do P2. Just like before, I'm going to put that right in the center. I'm going to draw it down and twist. Once I get about a half inch from the edge, I always make a little bit more of an exaggerated bend. This will help the edges come together really flush. I'm going to do a test fit. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and tear off a piece of tape. And like we did on the first piece, I'm going to apply glue to one side. And I'm going to use the paper on this side to overlap the paper on this side. This piece is big enough that I can kind of pinch it on either end, put a piece of tape across it. Again, I'm making sure that when these pieces come together, that they're coming together flush and that they're not like this. Okay, I'll set that piece off to the side and we're going to go ahead and do P3. P3 and P4 may feel a little bit different as you're forming them. The foam has a grain, and the way these kits are packaged up, the P3 and P4 go against the grain. You just have to work at it a little bit longer. Just like on the other parts, we rolled, draw it over the edge of the table. When I apply glue, I'm going to start about 3 16 from the end and stop about 3 16 from the end. That way, when I put the pieces together, we won't have glue shooting out either end. Checking to make sure there's no glue squirting out, and I'll pinch it. And put one piece of tape. I'll hold it pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and tear off one more piece. You can see here at the end where those edges aren't flush, it's starting to peak up. So I'm going to push down in the center and put a piece of tape across there. All right, now let's go do P4. P4 is done the same way as P3. P5 is going to be just slightly different. Since we glued this seam up, whenever we roll it, there's going to be a little bit of a catch right there. We just have to be careful when we roll the center. I'm 
when we're working this center area, just know that as you draw it over the edge of the table, it's going to catch just a little bit. That looks good. Now you can see that I'm kind of oblong, which means I probably need to work this area and this area just a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. Get a little tape. Glue things up. Alright, parts P6 and P7, we're going to add a little bit of curvature to, but they do not make a complete circle. So that'll be okay for now. Let's do the same thing on P7. That'll work. P8 will be done just like the other two. Now that we've added shape to each of these parts, we're going to go ahead and start gluing the pieces together. Let's go ahead and start with parts P1, P2, and P3. I'm going to grab a former just so you can kind of see the shape that we're going for. You can see when looking at the front of the P38, it's kind of got an upside down egg shape. Looking at part P1, you're going to want the seam facing downward. We're going to pinch it close to the bottom here where it will hold that upside down egg shape. Okay, once that's been done, go ahead and grab part P2. This is the one with the little slots for the guns to go through. Again, we want this seam at the bottom. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to kind of pinch it near the bottom. Okay, once we got that, we're going to lay P1 right on top of P2. You'll see that the seam is lined up exactly. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to line these two parts. Now there's a little bit of a gap between the nose and the next section. And if you look, you can see that there's quite a bit of foam poked up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that excess peak off holding a razor blade flat. Okay, let's see if that fits up any better now. Okay, that looks a lot better. Now we want to apply glue around the entire circumference of this part. Before we do that, I want to make sure that the fit between these two parts are perfect. So as I'm looking at this, you can see a little white line right here. I'm going to take and bend this in just a little bit. And really take your time on this step. A little bit of extra time spent ensuring that the fit is good will give you a much better looking finished product. Okay, that's really close. I'm going to bend this in just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to spin this around and you can see the fit that I've got. So we'll go ahead and apply glue to one side stick these two pieces together. Getting excess glue, just take a scrap of foam and you can wipe away the excess. Give that about a minute and a half to cool. After that's cooled, go ahead and grab both of the F1 formers and glue them together.
let that cool for about a minute. After it's cooled down, go ahead and cut a bevel around the entire former. All right, go ahead and grab the nose. You want the seam facing downward. At the bottom of F1, you're going to see a little crop mark. You're going to line that crop mark up with the seam. And we're going to push this in the thickness of one piece of foam. Okay, you can see that it's not wanting to go right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to cut the bevel back to that seam. I just need to remove a little bit more material. And that's definitely fitting better. Now that it's been test fit, let's go ahead and glue the former in. Let that cool for about a minute. And you'll notice that I've got one layer of foam sticking out. Once that's cooled down, we're going to go ahead and attach the next part. Go ahead and grab P3. And just like the others, we want to make sure that the seam is here at the bottom. And I'm going to line that seam up at the bottom. And I'm going to squeeze the sides, and as I do that, it's going to pop over that former that's sticking out. Now when I first put it on there, you're going to see that there's a pretty big gap there at the top. As I squeeze the bottom and create that egg shape, you're going to see that that gap will close in. When I take pressure off, that gap gets bigger. When I squeeze it, that gap closes. So, once we add glue, you're going to want to pinch here at the bottom and push forward here. All right? Happy with the way that looks. So go ahead and pull the parts apart. Go ahead and tear off about five pieces of tape, about four inches long. Now we're going to apply glue all the way around this former. I'm going to make sure there's no tape in the way. If there is, I'm just going to peel it back just a little bit. And we're going to apply a pretty heavy bead of glue. This will give us a lot of time to get parts in position. Lining up the seam at the bottom. Squeezing the sides. And that slides right over. Where I've got a good seam, I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape. I'm going to squeeze it at the bottom and push it. And you see I've got some glue squirting out. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that away using scrap. Okay, I think we're good. Go ahead and let that cool down and we'll go to the next step. Go ahead and grab your two F2 formers. Remove the windows from both. And we're going to glue the two together. Just like we did on former number one, we're going to add a bevel all the way around. You can see that I'm adding more bevel at the bottom than on the edges. Now we're going to go ahead and test fit former number two. And I'm going to line up this crop mark with the seam. And we're going to push this in. Just like with former number one, we want one layer of foam sticking up. Okay, that looks good. Go ahead and glue that in place. Using a pretty heavy bead of glue so we'll have plenty of time to get it in position. Hold that in place for about a minute while it cools. 
Once that cools, set it off to the side and go ahead and grab part number P4. Also, grab two formers marked F3. Go ahead and cut the windows out. And we're going to glue these together. Let that cool for about 30 seconds. Looking at the part labeled P4, you'll notice that there's a small end and a larger end. We want the smaller end facing downward. We're going to go and do a test fit with the former labeled F3. I'm looking at the crop mark, lining it up to the seam. I'm going to fit it in. And this time, we're going to go all the way flush. Okay, our fit looks good. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. And we're going to run glue all the way around the inside edge. Checking my alignment. If there is a gap around the perimeter, just make sure that that gap is even. Let this cool down for about a minute. While that's cooling down, go ahead and tear off four to five pieces of tape. Now let's do a test fit between the two parts. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to make sure that the seams are lined up. Now I'm going to look straight in. What's more important than the seams being lined up at the bottom is that this cutaway and this second cutaway are lined up exactly. I might need to clock things just a little bit differently. I had to rotate F3 clockwise just a little bit so that this knockout lines up with the second knockout. If I look at the seam, you can see that I'm a little bit off, and that's just fine. It's more important that the windows are lined up than the seams. Once I'm happy with my test fit, I'm going to pull the two parts apart. We're going to apply glue all the way around the perimeter. That's together good. Now I'm going to look at it from the back. Everything lines up good there. Now I'm going to start taping anywhere the seam looks good. I'm having to twist the parts. You can see there's a little bit of a gap there. So I'm going to twist this back part. That lines up. Now I can tape it. Seam looks good here. It just needs to be pushed together. Put a piece of tape there. You can see I've got a pretty big gap right there. I'm going to push that together. Do it from this side. Push that together and then tape it. I'm going to check the windows one last time before the glue fully cools. We look really good. You can set this part off to the side while we do the next step. Now go ahead and grab the section marked P5 and we're going to go ahead and glue on parts P6, P7, and P8. Go ahead and tear off a couple pieces of tape. We're going to do a test fit between P5 and P6. You'll notice that it will only fit one way. You'll see that the edge matches up on this side as well as this side. 
if the part is reversed, it'll match up on one side, but be short on the other. So make sure you have it turned correctly. So to make this easy, we're just going to glue one side at a time. Apply a bead of glue. And stick the two halves together. Hold that for about 45 seconds and then you can put a piece of tape across the seam. Once that cools, you can go ahead and do the other side. And I'm going to scissor this closed. And we'll get a piece of tape across that seam. Now we're going to go ahead and do a test fit between parts P6 and P7. P7 slants way back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch this like so. And fit the two parts together. Now you're going to notice there at the top that there's a pretty big gap and you can see that the foam is sticking out quite a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a razor blade and we're going to trim off that excess foam. Okay, let's check the fit again. There we go, that's much better. Let's go ahead and tear off a couple pieces of tape. And we're going to try to do half of this. Put my finger here at the halfway mark. Hold that in place for about a minute. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and put a piece of tape across the seam. Now let's do the other side. I'm going to apply glue. And I'm going to close the gap. Just like on the other side, hold that for about a minute, then you can add a piece of tape. Now we're going to add P8 to P7. Test fit looks good. Let's go ahead and glue this piece on. As small as this piece is, I'm going to go ahead and apply glue to the entire edge of P7. We'll add P8. And we'll let that cool for a full minute and a half before moving on. Alright, once that's cooled down, go ahead and grab the last two formers labeled F3. Cut the windows out. And go ahead and glue those together. Once that's cooled down, we're going to insert F3 into the front of P5. Lining up the crop mark there at the bottom with the seam. The former will be flush to the edge. That looks good. Let's go ahead and pull that out. We're going to apply glue all the way around the perimeter. Check an alignment. Okay, that looks good. Let that cool for about a minute. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and grab this arrowhead shaped piece. It's a symmetrical part. Tear paper off of either side. Alright, once that's done, we're going to add just a little bit of curvature, same way we did on the wing. 
bring it over to the edge of the table, draw it down very lightly. We're not going to have very much pressure on this one. So that'll be good right about there. Once you've added a little bit of shape to this part, we're going to slide this inside this canopy section. Now the fit does not have to be precise. It just needs to be even on both sides. Once it's in there, I'm going to pinch this closed. I want to make sure that the point of this part is lined up with the point here. There's about a quarter inch from this plate to this top edge. I want to make sure that I've got the same spacing on both sides. Once I've got it positioned where I want, I'm going to put a bead of glue about one inch long. Once I do that, I'm going to add a bead of glue on the other side as well. I'm not worried about going the full length yet. This short bead of glue on both sides holds the part in place. Make sure the glue has plenty of time to cool. Hold it for at least a minute and a half. Once you've got this piece tacked in place, we're going to go ahead and apply glue here and here. Again, the exact placement of this part isn't critical. I'm just trying to make sure that it's even on both sides. Give this plenty of time to cool down. Once that's cooled down, we're going to go ahead and run a bead of glue all the way down either side. If you're a little sloppy with glue, it's okay. All this will be hidden. Be sure to allow plenty of time for this to cool. Now that this assembly is dried, we're going to go ahead and trim back a little bit of foam so this will fit on the wing assembly nice and tight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run a razor blade right along the paper and we're just going to be removing just a slight amount of foam. and we're just removing just the slightest amount until we get here. And you can see that there's a bunch of foam hanging down here. We gently saw that away. And it's going to be pretty thin right here at the tip and that's all right. Now we'll do the same on the other side. I'll show you from a little different angle. Moving very little until about here. If there's anything sticking down, we want to cut that off. There we go. Now go ahead and grab your wing assembly and we're going to install this part. Let's go ahead and test fit the canopy section to the main wing. Over here on my left, I've got this cutout, and on my left, I've got this opening. I'm going to slide the canopy section over the wing assembly. It's going to be easy to see that it's centered here at the rear. The point of this will line up with this seam. I have to look through the window on either side and you'll see a little bit of wing sticking out on both sides. And you just want to make sure visually that this is centered. Once you get it centered the way you like, you can take a razor blade and just put a real small mark on either side. And when we go to glue it, you can check center from the outside rather than having to look on the inside. So once I'm happy with position, I'm going to go ahead and glue from about here to about here. Now you'll notice that there's a pretty big gap in there, but with just a slight amount of pressure we can close that gap. Once we apply glue, we are going to have to hold pressure on this until the glue cools down. So I don't have excessive glue coming out the side. I'm going to take a, a razor blade real lightly 
I'm going to draw a line. And do that on both sides. I'm going to lift up and I'm going to apply glue inside of that line that I just scribed. So I'll go ahead and apply a heavy bead of glue on both sides on the inside of that line that I scribed. Keep pressure for a full minute and a half while the glue cools. Once that's cooled down, let's go ahead and peel the tape away. And be careful when you're tearing over a seam that you don't take paper with the tape. You can see when I come up to a seam, I'll actually start to tear the tape in the direction of the seam. That'll help keep paper from peeling away as I'm removing tape. With the tape gone, I'm going to apply a pretty heavy bead of glue right along this seam. Do the same on the other side. Looks like I missed a spot here. Go ahead and set the assembly off to the side for the time being. We're going to go ahead and make the actual canopy. For this step, you're going to need C1, C2, C3, and C4. We're going to go ahead and peel one layer of paper off of each one. Just like we did in other steps, we're going to peel the layer that actually has the label on it. Once the paper's been peeled away, we're going to go ahead and roll each piece. I'm going to start on one edge, draw this over the edge of the table while twisting it slightly. Okay, that's good. Let's go ahead and do the next section. And the next. So drawing it down over the edge. Same on the last. So let's start by putting C1 and C2 together. You'll notice that there's a narrow side and a wide side. We're going to glue the narrower side. Alright, so I'm first going to test fit it. And you'll see that there's a big gap in there. So what we need to do is remove just a little bit of foam so that'll come together a little neater. Right, let's check that again. Alright, that's going to work okay. A little bit clumsy trying to hold it together, but I can tell that it's going to be a good fit. So before we glue, let's go ahead and tear off three pieces of tape. About three to four inches long. And we're going to glue about a third of this at a time. I'm going to hold this for about a minute, then you can put a piece of tape across it. Once it's cooled down, let's do another third of it. I'm going to apply glue to C1. Let's scissor this closed. Hold it for a minute, then you can put a piece of tape across it. Now we'll go ahead and close in the last third. Again, I'm applying glue to C1. Hold for a minute and then tape. Now we're going to glue C3 to C2. I'm going to do a quick test fit. 
that comes together just fine. I don't see any gaps, so it doesn't look like we need to do any trimming. I'm going to start by tearing off a few pieces of tape, and let's glue about a third of the way. I'm going to flip it over and apply glue to C2. Close the gap. Flip it back over. Apply glue to C2. And close the gap. I'm going to go ahead and grab C4, and we're going to glue that to C3. I'm going to do a quick test fit. Test fit looks good. I don't have any gap up here at the top. And I'm actually going to try to do this all at once. Sometimes it works out where you can do it all at once, but if you have to do it twice or three times, that's okay too. I'm looking, I'm looking at the edge of my canopy and it looks like one of the pieces was just slightly longer than the other. It's no big deal. I'm just going to go and trim just a little bit of excess off, kind of blend the lines together. I'll flip it over and do the same on the other side. This side looks pretty good. Just have to remove just a little bit of material. Now we've got a nice smooth edge. Before this piece was hanging down just a little bit, so we trimmed it off and it was hanging down just a little bit too far here. So now I've got a nice smooth line. Now we're going to be installing the canopy onto the center section, but in order to get the canopy to fit correctly, we need to add a bevel to this inside edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the canopy over. I'm going to run my razor blade right along this edge. And cutting this bevel will allow the canopy to fit a little tighter. Here's the material I removed. You can see that I was cutting a really shallow bevel. I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. So again, the big wide piece cut. Now I need to go in on the front and the back and cut a bevel. And you can see it's a really shallow bevel that I'm cutting. Okay, once a bevel's cut, go ahead and grab the wing assembly and we'll install the canopy. Now we're going to go ahead and test fit the canopy. If you notice, there's a very small tick mark right here. And there's also a very small tick mark right here. These are going to correspond to a tick mark at the back and a tick mark up here at the front. If you're not sure which is the front and back, C1 is the front. So let's go ahead and line up the rear tick mark. And we'll line up the front one. Now there's going to be about an eighth of an inch gap between the front of the canopy and the edge right here. We want to line the back of the canopy up to this line. I'm pressing down on the canopy, making sure that it's flush here at the front and it's flush here at the back. You can see that the sides aren't touching and that's okay. We're, we're more worried about this getting glued at the, at the back and then also at the front. So the test fit looks good. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a bead of glue around this entire area.
I'm going to start by lining up the rear crop mark in the front and then I'm going to squeeze the sides. Hold this for a full minute and a half. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and set your assembly off to the side. Let's grab our battery box. Using a credit card or a dulled razor blade, go right along the scores. Break them open and peel out the center. Now we're going to make an A-fold, which means that the sides are above the bottom plate, like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a line of glue. And we're going to roll the center straight up. Let that cool for about 30 to 45 seconds, and we'll do the other side. Go ahead and run a bead of glue like you did on the other side. Roll the center straight up. And let that cool down. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and roll your box over like this. And we're going to glue a popsicle stick right here. Once that cools down, go ahead and grab your wing assembly again. And we're going to install the battery box. The battery box is going to slide straight in. The bottom of the wing is going to be riding on this side and this side. You'll push the battery box in until the leading edge of the wing contacts right here. So let's test fit it. Okay, that's where it needs to be right there. So I'm going to pull it back out. I'm going to apply a small amount of glue here and here. Let that cool for about 45 seconds. Once that's cooled down, I'm going to apply a bead of glue on either side. You can see how there was a little bit of a gap there at the top, so I'm going to open this box a little bit as this cools. As that's cooling down, go ahead and grab the nose, and then we're going to find that very small pill-shaped piece. Alright, first thing we're going to want to do is tear off one side. You can see when we test fit, it doesn't want to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a bevel so that that piece fits. Okay, that looks good. I'll go ahead and glue it in place. Let that cool for a full 45 seconds. Now let's go ahead and test fit the nose. I'm going to slide this on. You have to wiggle it up and down a little bit. All right. Okay, you can see we've got a good fit here at the top, but there's a gap at the bottom. That's easy to fix. We're going to pull this off. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove a little bit of material at an angle from here. And it's going to taper up 
to here. Do the same on the other side. Okay, let's test fit this again. Okay, it's better, but I still need to take a little bit more. Okay, that's pretty close. All right, our test fit looks good. If you want, you can go ahead and peel tape away. It's actually starting to look like an airplane now. Now let's go ahead and set this assembly off to the side, and we're going to go ahead and start on the booms. Now we're going to go ahead and build the booms. Go ahead and remove them from the kit. One of them will be labeled with a letter L. The other will be labeled with a letter R. You'll notice the seam right down the middle. Go ahead and break it open. And we're going to fill this channel with glue. Go ahead and lay it flat and allow it to cool. I'm going to put a roll of tape on here to keep it flat. We'll do the same on the other. Break it open. Apply glue and lay it flat. Give that a full minute and a half to cool down and then we're going to go ahead and peel the paper. Once the glue cools down, let's go ahead and peel off one layer of paper. Make sure that you tear off the side with the letter. Once you've got paper torn off, it's time to go ahead and start rolling. Of all the steps in this build, forming the booms are going to require the most time and attention. Take your time on this step and they'll turn out just fine. Unfortunately, there are no shortcuts. It's going to take some time to form these correctly. When forming the booms, I'm going to work the area between my fingers. It's about an inch from either edge. It's going to taper down to where it's about an inch from either edge here at the back as well. Just like before, we're drawing it over the side of the table with a moderate amount of pressure. As I'm drawing it over the table, I'm also twisting slightly. After I've gone over this area about a dozen times or so. I'm going to turn my attention to this last inch. And what I'm going to do is I, as I draw this over the table, I'm going to be bending with my fingers like I've done on other parts. Do the same on the other side. Even though we've worked this center section a dozen times or more, we're not anywhere close to having this pliable like we need. If we tried to form things up now, you can see it just pops open. And if we forced it closed, we would have crinkle marks all up and down this piece. So now we're going to have to do something just a little bit different to get the shape that we're looking for. Go ahead and start by tearing off a number of pieces of tape about seven to eight inches long. All right, now that that's been done, we're going to roll the boom over. And I'll start rolling it the way you would a newspaper.
I'm adding a little bit of pressure, but you notice that there's no crinkles along here. Okay, I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing. As I'm rolling, you can see that I'm curling this edge in with my fingers. I'm spending most of my time from here over. This area is pretty pliable because it's got a pretty big circumference, but down here it's not wanting to go. I'm being careful not to make crinkles. You might be able to see where I did get one crinkle right there. I'm going to kind of watch that area. All right, I can feel the material starting to get a little bit more pliable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more pressure and I'm actually going to try to roll this now. Being careful not to form any crinkles. Okay, so you can see I can almost get this to roll inside itself. All right, so we're really close. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to wrap it around and then leave this sticky side up. I'm going to put another piece right here and one more up here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and roll this again. We're going to roll it up like a newspaper. And I'm pushing the edge in with my fingertips. It's kind of hard to see that in, in the camera. And once I get it rolled, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this tape around it. We're going to leave this like this for 30 minutes or so. This will really help this foam take the shape that we want. Okay, with that all taped up, let's do the same thing on the other one. So again, we're just going to work about an inch in from the edge. Now we're going to work the edges. Now we'll start rolling it. Alright, we'll set that off to the side. Now let's move on to the horizontal stabilizer. For the horizontal stabilizer, go ahead and remove this piece from your kit. You'll also need a 9 gram servo. Go ahead and grab your dulled razor blade. And we're going to go down this score and these two scores. Break that open. Let's tear out this center piece. There are two rectangles on either end. Go ahead and go around the scores of your dulled blade. Pop those out. Do the same on the other side. Using your sharp razor blade, remove these two rectangles in the middle. All right, once that's done, Go ahead and remove your servo. We're using the Flight Test 9 gram servo for this. So let's do a test fit. I'm going to go ahead and drop the servo in like this. Now you'll notice 
that the wire is close to this channel we removed. So I'm going to run this wire down the channel and it's going to go out this hole. If you're using a servo that has a wire that's not long enough to go through the hole, you can tear away this rectangle right here. You can connect the servo to an extension and the connection can stay right inside this cutout area. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to do is press the servo all the way in and rotate this upwards. And that's our test fit. You can see the wire hanging out. That's good. And everything looks like it fits really well. I'm going to open this up. And now I'm going to fill this channel full of glue and apply glue all along here. And then we'll fold it back. I am going to be careful not to get glue in this cutout and this cutout over here. As the glue is cooling, I'm making sure that things are laying flat. Let this cool for a full minute. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and fold your elevator all the way back. I'm going to lay a ruler about a quarter inch from the edge. We're going to cut a bevel. Good. Run a bead of glue. Then wipe away the excess using scrap. Make sure the elevator stays open while the glue cools. I'm going to the next step. Go ahead and grab the 12 unlabeled formers. We're going to glue these together in groups of three. Before we do that, let's go ahead and cut the windows out. Now go ahead and glue these in groups of three. Once that's done, go ahead and set these off to the side and grab the booms. I'm going to go ahead and pull the tape off these. Set the tape off to the side. We'll be using it again here in just a minute. Now that time, we had this edge tucked towards the center. What we're going to do is we're going to flip this around and we're going to tuck this edge towards the center this time. You can see here on the end how tight I've been able to roll this. You can see where I've got a little bit too aggressive. You can see a little bit of a pucker here. You're probably going to get one or two of those. It's all right. It doesn't hurt performance. I'm going to go ahead and put tape on here, like I did before. Okay, and just like before, tape that closed. And you want to leave this for about 30 minutes at least. Now let's do the other one. It's definitely getting easier to roll, taking a lot of the spring out.
if you're doing this project over two or three days, this is a really good stopping point for the day. At a minimum, you'll want to leave these rolled up for about 30 minutes. But if you leave it overnight and then you go to glue it the next day, it is much, much easier. The foam really holds its shape when left overnight. Go ahead and remove the following parts from your kit. Over here, I've got the two vertical stabilizers. These two parts, these two parts, and these four parts make up the engine cowling. The supercharger is made up of three parts. Main piece and these two little parts. So you'll have one for the right side and one for the left side. Over here we've got the two power pods. Once you get all these parts pulled, let's get started. We're going to start with both the left and right engine cowlings. So we're going to keep these parts and we're going to set everything else off to the side. Go ahead and remove paper from one side. These pieces are all symmetrical, so it won't matter which side that you remove. Now we're going to go ahead and form up the cowling. Go ahead and roll it over with the foam side down. We're going to draw this over the edge of the table like we've done elsewhere. Now we're going to glue it together. Go ahead and tear off a couple pieces of tape. Go ahead and apply glue. And again, I'm going to use the paper on this side to slightly overlap the paper on this side. Check both ends to make sure there's no glue squirting out. I can pinch them together and add a piece of tape. I'll set that off to the side and do the same on this one. Now let's move on to the two remaining parts. Now let's do the front of the cowling. As I draw this part over the table, I'm going to be twisting it slightly. What I'm trying to do is maintain 90 degrees between the table and the part. So you can see as I'm drawing it, I'm maintaining that 90 degrees. Okay. We'll do this three or four times. That should be enough. That looks good. Now we'll do the last one. Once those four parts are glued together, go ahead and set them off to the side and we're going to glue up the cowling intakes. These pieces are going to be doubled up. You'll notice that I left this rectangle in there. When I glue the two pieces together, I'm going to try not to get glue on this rectangle. And if for some reason all these parts get broken up, it's really no big deal. I just leave that rectangle in there to keep everything from getting lost. Before I glue them together, I am going to remove these three parts off the bottom. Alright, once that's done, I'm going to apply glue here at the top, on the sides, and here at the bottom.
I'm going to carefully line everything up and glue the two pieces together. We'll repeat the same process on the other one. Like before, go ahead and remove the three cutouts from each piece. And we'll glue it together like we did the other. Glue at the top, glue on either side, and glue at the bottom. For now, these can be set off to the side and allowed to cool. Go ahead and grab the two larger cowling sections and grab two of these formers. What we're going to do is we're going to insert a former into each one. I'm aligning the crop mark with the seam and pushing the former in. I'm going to push the former down until there is one layer of foam sticking out. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. Again, I'm lining up the crop mark to the seam. You shouldn't need beveling to push the former down, but if you're really struggling to get the former to fit, you can put a small bevel to make it a little easier to go in. Okay, that fit looks good. Looks like I need to twist this just a little bit. There we go. Rather than pulling the former out and applying glue to the inside of the cowling skin, we're just going to apply a bead of glue right along this edge all the way around. I'm going to have a piece of scrap on standby because we want to remove all the excess glue. Okay, let's do the same on the other one. Okay, once that's done, we'll flip it over and you can add glue along the inside. You can see I've got a little bit of pressure side to side. I noticed when I was looking at it from the inside, I had a small gap over here on this side. I've got general pressure on the surface while the glue cools down. We'll set that off to the side and do the same on the other one. I'm going to go ahead and add glue on the inside right along the edge. Go ahead and set these two assemblies off to the side to cool down and go ahead and grab the vertical stabilizers. Since our P38 is set up with differential thrust, we don't actually need any rudder movement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these rudders and I'm going to break them open along the score. I'm going to fill this score with glue and lay it flat. I'm going to remove the excess glue. And we'll do the same on the other side. And these can be set off to the side to cool. Now go ahead and grab the parts for the superchargers. Let's start out by gluing this piece in place. You'll notice that it's pointing towards the front. Put a drop of glue right in the center. And we'll drop this in place. 
Let's do the same on the other side. We'll drop a glue right in the center. Put that in place. All right, once that's done, we'll do a test fit right here. We're going to drop this piece in. All right, and you can see how it's got just a little bit hanging over. That's what we want. And we can roll this over on the bottom and just put a small amount of glue. It doesn't take much to hold this in place. Okay, and we'll leave that upside down for about a minute or so while things cool down. Let's do the same on the other one. Flip it over and let that cool down as well. Once that's cooled down, one thing that I like to do is I like to cover this wide edge with a piece of paper and that can easily be done with a piece of scrap. What I'll do is I'll take a cut out from one of the formers and I'll lay my ruler down and I've got a little over an eighth of an inch between the edge of the ruler and the edge of the piece of scrap. I'm going to take my knife, make a cut, and I'm just going to peel that piece of paper up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that in place right here. And that just cleans things up a bit. This is purely optional. It's just something that I always do when I make the superchargers. Okay, and we'll do the same for the other side. Go ahead and set these parts off to the side while they cool down. Now we're going to go ahead and assemble the power pods. Grab your dulled razor blade and go down each of the scores. Once that's done, break it open and remove the center piece. Like the battery box, these are an A fold, so the sides will be above the bottom plate. So that looks good. I'm going to apply glue to one side and we're going to roll the center piece straight up. Let that cool for about 45 seconds, and then we'll do the other side. Like before, we're going to apply glue along the edge. Lay flat and roll the center section straight up. Let that cool for 45 seconds, and then we're going to do the same thing on the other power pod. Once the power pods are done, go ahead and clear your tabletop. We're going to go back to working on the booms. Go ahead and grab one of your booms. It doesn't matter which one. And we're going to go ahead and remove tape. Be careful when removing tape that you don't peel away the paper underneath. Now with the tape removed, you can see that the boom is holding its shape. It's much easier to glue this seam together. So we're going to start on this side and work our way towards the end. Let's start with a test fit. I'm going to bring these two edges together and you'll notice that one edge is slightly further forward than the other. So I'm going to shift things just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and attempt to glue about 10 inches Okay, I'm looking at my seam and everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape on one side. And you can see that I'm not crossing this seam. I'm going to go ahead and put in a second piece of tape on one side. 
I'm going to fold the tape backwards like I did on the first before I reach the seam. And let's go ahead and put a third piece on as well. Okay, I'm going to test things one more time. I'm making sure that I'm lined up here at the front. And I'm also making sure my seam looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a bead of glue on this side. And when I stick the two halves together, I'm going to make sure the paper on this side is slightly overlapping the paper on this side. Now with the edges pressed together, I'm going to move this center piece of tape across the seam and that will help hold things in place. Now I'm going to go ahead and tape here at the front. And then I'll go ahead and run this last piece of tape across as well. My seam looks pretty good. Looks like it's popping up here a little bit, so I'm going to tear off a piece of tape and tape it there also. When I apply tape, once I get to the seam, I'm going to press straight down and pull the tape tight. This seam looks good. Now we're going to go ahead and do another section. Like before, we're going to go ahead and get three pieces of tape ready. Apply glue. Press the edges together. If you've got a little bit of excess glue squirting out, use a piece of scrap to remove it. Anywhere your seam looks good, go ahead and run your tape across. This looks like it's peaking up just a little bit and not perfectly flush. I'm going to tear off one more piece of tape and tape that up. Apply tape to one side. And once I get to the seam, I'm going to press down slightly on the seam and then pull the tape tight. Once that tape's removed, the two edges should be perfectly flush. Now we're going to do the same thing here on the end. So as we come to the end, you'll notice that these two edges aren't quite flush. I'm going to reach inside here and bend this edge as best I can. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Once we get tape across there, we can press straight down and that ought to close that gap right there. So let's get two pieces of tape and we'll get them staged over on one side. Once tape's in place, let's go ahead and apply glue. Squeezing the sides together, I'm going to pull the piece of tape up to the seam, press down slightly, and wrap the tape on around. And you can see how the gap is completely closed here and over here. You see I've got my fingers in glue. Be real careful on this step that you don't get burned. Pull the tape to the seam, press straight down and then wrap the tape on around. I'm going to go ahead and get one more piece of tape here at the end. You can see that that's opened up. 
put a piece of tape right up there. I'm going to squeeze the two sides together, press down in the center, wrap. Go ahead and set this boom off to the side while the glue cools down, and we'll start working on the other one. Let's start by removing tape. All right, this piece looks really good also. As before, we're gonna start with a test fit. And again, I'm not only checking my seam, I'm making sure that I'm lined up perfectly here as well. Okay, that looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and stage three pieces of tape. One more quick test fit. Okay, that looks good. Go ahead and apply glue. Again, make sure the paper on this side overlaps the paper on this side. That'll keep glue from squirting up. Okay, my seam looks good right there in the middle, so I'm going to draw this piece of tape across the seam. The seam looks good, so I'm going to do the same up front. And there's a little bit of a gap here, so I'm going to pinch things together and then draw the tape across. That looks really good. Let's go ahead and do the next section. Make sure you've got some scrap handy. When we apply glue from here towards the back, there's a greater chance of glue squirting up from the seam. Okay, I'm going to do a quick test fit here. Okay, that looks good. You can see I've got my finger in the gap over here. I want to make sure that I've got plenty of room to squirt some glue. Got a little excess glue up here, so I'm going to wipe it away with scrap. And let's go ahead and glue this together. Anywhere the seam looks good, run your tape across. Now we'll do this last section. Check our test fit. It's a little harder to close this gap, but I think we'll be able to work with that just fine. That seam looks good. Draw the tape across. Right there, that closes that gap in. Run that tape across. And that looks good there. All right, set that off to the side to cool and go ahead and grab the other one. So for this next step, we're going to be creating cutaways for the wings to pass through. With the seam on the table, you're going to notice an airfoil shape outline created by some dotted lines. We need to pull the tape away from these dotted lines. 
make sure you've got about an inch of clearance all the way around. Do the same thing on the other side as well. One of the challenges with this build is when the wings are passing through the boom, there's a whole lot of stress here and back here. So we're going to need to add some reinforcement, and this is only going to be temporary reinforcement. What I found works best is this Gorilla Tape. Regular packing tape doesn't seem to work very well because it doesn't have much strength. Gorilla Tape is very thick and very strong. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to lay a piece of tape over this entire airfoil cutaway. So I'm going to start by tearing off a piece of tape that will cover that entire airfoil cutout. do the same on the other side as well. Once that's done, I'm going to add a third piece of tape right along the leading edge. We also need to add a piece of tape to the inside to add a little bit of additional reinforcement. It's a little bit difficult to show this on camera, so make sure whenever you are sticking this to the inside that the tape covers the entire outline of the airfoil. I'll just cut away the excess tape. And do the same on the other side. I'll just cut away the excess tape. Once the tape is in place, you can take a magic marker and you can draw a line. You're just playing connect the dots. Make sure you're only drawing on the tape and that you don't get any on the paper itself. On the bottom it's perfectly flat so you can use a ruler if you like. And do the same on the other side. One last thing before we cut, I'm going to go ahead and insert this former temporarily. I'm going to line up the crop mark there at the bottom. Squeeze the sides and push this in. The fit here is a little bit tight, so I'm going to pull the former out, and I'm going to add a bevel here and here. Because of the taper of the boom, I'm going to need to remove quite a bit of material here at the bottom. You can see I'm cutting into the second layer of foam as well. Take a little off the side here. Okay, let's test the fit. Okay, you can see I've got one layer of foam poking out. That's ultimately where we're going to want this piece. The former is making sure that the boom is the right shape. I'm going to go ahead and put my ruler flat up against the former. And the edge of the ruler needs to be even with the bottom of this line. 
It also needs to be even with the bottom of the line on the other side as well. This is the path that the wing is going to take. As I'm cutting, I need to make sure that my blade is parallel to this ruler. It's important to cut this angle correctly. This will ensure a good, tight fit. It's going to be a little bit difficult to cut because you're cutting through a couple layers of tape and the foam. So I'm just using a short sawing motion and carefully following the line. Really take your time on this step and things will turn out great. Once I cut this line on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and cut the top line. I'm going to look to see the approximate angle of my blade. I'm going to pull my blade out, keeping the angle, and maintaining the same angle, I'm going to go ahead and cut this curved line. You can see my blade is pretty parallel to the tabletop. Now we're going to do the same on the other side. I've got my ruler in place so I can get my angle correct. We'll cut this like we did the other side. I can see that my razor blade is almost parallel to the table. It's a little bit easier for me to cut from right to left. Now we'll do the same on the other one. Let's go ahead and start on the other boom. Go ahead and pull the tape back. And let's go ahead and add some reinforcement. Go ahead and cut away the excess. And we'll add tape to the inside. Go ahead and cut away the excess. Now we'll go ahead and trace the cutaways. Go ahead and grab your former and let's go ahead and cut a bevel along the bottom. Remember we're going to be going through two layers on this bevel. Let's go ahead and test fit. I'm making sure that my crop mark is lined up with the seam. Looks like I've got one layer of foam sticking out all the way around. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and cut out the wing slots. So on this cut, I'm going to do it a little bit differently than I did on the previous one. Last time I used a ruler to help determine the angle. This time I'm going to make sure that the boom is perfectly vertical. I don't want it leaned over to one side or the other. I want to try to get it straight up and down. I'm going to hold my blade parallel to the table and plunge it in. If using a ruler is helpful, feel free to use it. If not, this method works great also. Do the same on the other side.
There we go. Now let's go ahead and install the booms on the wings. Go ahead and grab your main wing assembly. You're going to notice that there's a crop mark about five and a half inches from the fuselage on the leading edge of the wing. There's also a crop mark about seven and a half inches from the center of the wing on the trailing edge. Whenever we slide the boom in place, the edge of the boom is going to come up to these two crop marks. We're going to be working on the left wing first. Make sure that you've got the left boom. If you're not sure which is which, look inside the window right here at the top and you'll see either an L for left or an R for right. Go ahead and begin sliding the left wing through the slots in the left boom. You can see as I'm sliding this over, I'm twisting it back and forth. We're going a little less than a half inch with each movement. Once I come to the edge of the aileron, I'm going to make sure that nothing gets torn. The closer I get to the center, the tighter it's going to be. The boom's going to want to catch right here on the edge of the aileron, so take your time when transitioning from the aileron to the trailing edge of the wing. definitely starting to get tighter. I'm being careful not to move the boom too much. You'll notice that I'm moving the front just a little bit, and then I'm coming back and moving the back just a little bit. You can see that I've got the boom almost to the reference mark. I'm just going to move it a little bit more. That looks good. Do the same with the front. All right, that looks really good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the tape along this edge and this edge only. Once I remove the tape, I'm going to run a bead of glue right down this edge. That's going to keep everything in place. I'm actually going to cut the tape right where it goes from one layer to two. I'm going to make sure that the edge of my boom is still lined up to the two crop marks. That looks good. And I'm going to add a bead of glue right along the seam. Now let's do the other side. Now let's go ahead and slide the right boom in place the same way we did the left. Looks like the boom is right up against the reference mark in the front, and it looks like the boom is right up against the reference mark in the back. That looks really good. So we're going to peel away a little bit of tape, and again I'm going to cut the tape right where it goes from one layer to two. I had a bead of glue. Now we get to add tons and tons of wires. Now that we've got the booms tacked in place, we're going to go ahead and install the servos for the ailerons. Go ahead and pop out the formers on either side. And go ahead and set those off to the side. And go ahead and remove the nose. 
Once that's done, we're going to flip this whole assembly upside down. For the ailerons, we're going to be using the Flight Test 9 gram servo. The servo extension wires may vary in color. They may be the same color as the servo wires. As you can see here, these are black, red, and white instead of the brown, red, and yellow. You can see that I've got the yellow wire running to the white wire. Once you get them connected, go ahead and tape this up. Once that's taped, we're going to go ahead and run the servo wire through the wing. It may be necessary to hold the wing vertically in order to get the wire to feed through. Go ahead and remove the single servo arm from the kit as well as a small screw. The servos do come factory centered. You'll notice that I've got the servo arm pointing towards the wing tip. Also note the orientation of my servo. Go ahead and screw the servo arm down. Once that's done, let's do the other side. Just like on the other side, we're going to feed the wire through and the wire will come out the center over here on my right. This one isn't wanting to go, so I'm going to tilt the whole assembly vertical. Now that we've got both wires through, we're going to go ahead and add a Y. Double checking that white goes to white, black goes to black. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and tape these joints. Once you got the joints taped, you're going to notice a small opening here. We're going to go ahead and run the wire into that opening into the battery box. I'm going to flip the assembly over so you can see where it needs to come out. Let's go ahead and flip the assembly back over. Let's insert our servo. And let's install this single arm like we did on the other side. Go ahead and screw it down until it's tight. The control horns we're going to use for the ailerons have a slot cut in them. Make sure you grab the right ones when doing this step. Now that we've got the servo in place, we're going to go ahead and run the linkage to the aileron. First thing I want to check is to see if there's any interference. And you can see right here, there's a little bit of interference. So using a razor blade, I'm going to cut this edge back. Alright, clearance looks good. Now what I'm going to do is using a barbecue skewer, I'm going to run it right down this little slit in the aileron. I'm going to flip it over, use the dull side. Now I've got an opening that this control horn will easily fit in. I'm looking to make sure that the hole in the control horn is directly above this hinge. That looks good. If the control horn needs to be moved backwards or come forward just a little bit, you can remove it and open it up using a razor blade. Okay, go ahead and set your control horn off to the side for a minute. Go ahead and run the Z bend of the push rod through the outermost hole on the servo arm. Now 
we're going to make a bend directly over the hinge using a small pair of pliers. I'm going to grab the wire directly above the hinge and I'm going to bend it towards the center of the aircraft. Once that's done, I'm going to grab the wire right here and bend the push rod straight back. I'm making sure the Z-bend is directly over the hinge. That looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess. Once that's done, let's go ahead and glue the servo in place. I'm going to pull it out slightly, apply a small amount of glue under each of these ears, push down, and I'm going to put a small bead of glue along the front edge here. Also do a small bead on the back edge. Let that cool down and we'll go ahead and install the control horn. Now that the servo's glued in place, go ahead and run the push rod Z-bend through the hole on the control horn. And we're going to do a quick test fit. I'm making sure that the aileron is in the neutral position. And I'm going to test fit to make sure no further adjustments need to be made. Everything looks even across the back. This looks good. I'm going to pull this out and add some glue. Got my aileron in the neutral position. As that's cooling down, I'm watching right here to make sure that nothing shifts. Go ahead and let that cool down for a full minute. Once it cools, let's flip it around and do the other side. Go ahead and glue your servo in. Small amount of glue under each tab. And a small bead of glue on the leading edge side and the trailing edge side. While that's cooling, take your barbecue skewer and go ahead and open up this slit just a little bit starting with the pointed side and I'll flip it around to the dull side. Just like before, we're going to run the push rod through the outermost hole of the servo arm. Again, I'm using a small set of pliers, just like on the other side. I'm grabbing the push rod directly above the hinge with a pair of needle nose pliers. And I'm going to bend the push rod towards the center. I'm going to grab the push rod again right at the 90 degree bend. And I'm going to pull the push rod straight back. Looking to see. The Z-bend is directly above the hinge, so let's go ahead and cut off the excess. Go ahead and run the Z-bend through the hole in the control horn. Put the aileron at the neutral position. Let's get a test fit. Everything looks really close. I'll move it back just a tiny bit. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and pull the control horn back out and apply some glue. Be sure this stays even as the glue is cooling down. Give this a full minute to cool. Go ahead and flip the assembly over. Now we're going to run the wiring for the elevator. In order to make sure that we're running the wiring through the correct boom, go ahead and grab your horizontal stabilizer assembly. The side with the doubler needs to be facing the table. The elevator extension will be approximately 36 inches long. It's going to run through the boom all the way to the midpoint here on the wing. And it's going to make a 90 degree turn and it's going to go to the center section 
and it's going to make another 90 degree turn and come out the battery box. It's going to be a little tricky to run. Just take your time. You'll get it. Go ahead and connect your extensions together. The number and color of extensions may vary depending on the kit that you get. The important thing is you have a minimum of 36 inches. Double check that everything is connected correctly and go ahead and tape up the joints. This is going to be a little hard to, to video, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run this all the way through the boom. Let's start by running the extension all the way through the boom. You may need to turn your entire assembly upright in order to do this. You might be able to feed it while it's flat. Once the extension is all the way through, leave about an inch and a half or so hanging out the back, fold it towards the center, put a piece of tape on it. Taping it in place will make sure that it's not pulled up inside the boom while we're running it the rest of the way. Now that the wire has been pulled through, we're going to feed it into this hole right here. It's about a two inch by two inch square right in the center of the wing. It's going to be a little tricky to show it on camera. Go ahead and flip the assembly over and you can see the extension is now coming out the center. Now we're going to feed the elevator extension into this small opening into the battery box. Okay, I'm going to pull it off to the side. And we'll go ahead and tape that in place. While we're at it, we'll go ahead and tape the Y for the ailerons. Now that the elevator extension has been run, we're going to go ahead and run the extensions for the ESC. It's difficult to video the wire being fed from here, through the wing, and out the battery box. The important thing to remember is the wire needs to be fed into this two inch by two inch hole on the bottom of the wing. It'll go down, make a 90 degree turn, and it's going to come out this hole right in the center. Once the wire reaches here, it's going to be fed into the battery box just like the previous wires. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and tape the wire to the outside of the battery box. Now let's do the same on this side. The last thing we have to run is the power harness. Go ahead and flip your assembly upside down. The power harness runs from the battery box. It runs through this rectangle here at the center, runs down the wing, comes out the rectangle on the bottom of the wing, and then one side gets connected to the ESC on this side, and one gets connected to the ESC on the other side. Let's start by feeding it into this cutout in the center of the wing. As I'm pushing from the center, I'm going to catch the end of it as it comes out the hole in the bottom of the wing. All right, once that's through, go ahead and connect it with the ESC. Let's do the same thing on the other side. The last step we're going to do is push this through to the battery box. I'm going to set the assembly straight up and down and push this through. This is big enough. We're not going to need to tape it in place. It's not going anywhere. With the wiring out of the way, go ahead and set the assembly off to the side and we'll move on to the next step. Now we're going to go ahead and build the reinforcements for the booms. You're going to need these four pieces from your kit and these two wooden pieces. Let's start by gluing two of these together. Now 
make sure they line up exactly and we'll do the same on the other one. Let those cool down for about 30 seconds. Once they've had a chance to cool down, you'll see a little step down at the back. This wooden piece is going to be glued right here. So I'm going to check the fit. That looks good. I'm going to put a heavy bead of glue along the back edge of this foam and glue this wooden piece in place. While that's cooling down, we'll go ahead and do the other one. Let this cool down for a full minute. Let's go ahead and grab our main assembly again, and we'll go ahead and install these. Let's do a test fit of the boom reinforcement. The wooden piece goes towards the rear. This gets fed underneath the wing, and this will go all the way through the end of the boom. The bottom of the wing will rest on this step down. The trailing edge of the wing will rest against this vertical right here. I'm going to go ahead and push this all the way through. So I'm pulling with one hand and pushing with the other. I'm grabbing the wood as it comes out the back. Continue to pull the wood through until you see the step and then push it back in just slightly. With the step even with the trailing edge of the boom, I'm going to flip the entire assembly around and I want you to see how the foam is now engaged with the underside of the wing. Once the reinforcement is in the correct position, you'll notice that this thin piece will be able to rest flush against the underside of the wing. Our test fit looks really good. So now we're going to pull the reinforcement out and add some glue. Let's go ahead and pull the reinforcement out. Now we're going to go ahead and apply glue. I'm going to apply glue all along the top, all the way down to here. I'm going to stop right before it steps down and gets narrow. I'm also going to apply a bunch of glue right along this little narrow piece. Once we've applied glue, I'm going to push the entire assembly all the way in until this step is even with the back of the boom. Once it's in, I'm going to apply pressure to this skinny part on the underside of the wing while the glue is cooling down. So let's go ahead and add glue all along the top here and all along here. I'm going to be using a lot of glue. Adding a lot of glue is going to give us plenty of time to move this part around. Be careful to keep the glue right in the center because your hand is going to be inside here. If any of it drips off, it could burn you. So if you see any glue coming off the side, go ahead and wipe it away with a piece of scrap before you install the reinforcement. Okay, I've got the step even with the back of the boom. I'm going to push up and hold this skinny piece against the bottom of the wing until the glue is cooled down. I'm also going to keep a little bit of pressure right here. This will make sure that reinforcement sticks to the top of the boom. Hold this for a full two minutes. We definitely want to make sure this piece doesn't shift around. You can see that I didn't quite get it centered left to right, but that's okay. Now let's go ahead and do the other side. The right boom is slightly more difficult because we've got the extension running to the elevator running the entire length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull the extension wire tight. 
pulling it tight will help clear the path for the reinforcement. Once you've pulled the extension tight, go ahead and re-tape it at the battery box. I'm going to go ahead and pull the ESC towards the center and feed the reinforcement through. I'm going to pull until I reach the step in the wood. Okay, there we go. I'm going to make sure this skinny section will lay flush against the bottom of the wing. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and pull it out and add glue. Be sure, as you're applying pressure to the underside of the wing, you're also applying a slight amount of pressure with your other hand to the top of the boom towards the rear. Give this a full two minutes to cool. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and install the horizontal stabilizer. Go ahead and rotate the assembly to where the two wooden pieces are facing you. If you look at the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer, you're going to notice a small rectangular cutout. One on this side and one on the other side, right by where the wire comes out. Let's do a test fit. The little wooden pieces that are sticking out of the back of the boom will slide right into those little rectangular cutouts. Okay, that looks really good. But before we glue it, we're going to need to go ahead and connect the elevator to the elevator extension. So let's pull this off. Let's remove tape from the extension and go ahead and connect it to the elevator servo. Double checking that I've got my yellow wire running to the white wire and I'll go ahead and tape it up. Now I'm going to make sure that I can shove this connector down into the boom. I want to make sure that I've got clearance to do that. Okay, it looks like it's going to go in without too much issue. So the next step is going to be to fill this cavity and this cavity with glue. In addition to that, I'm also going to apply glue to the top of the wood here and here. I'm going to go ahead and start over here on my left and then I'm going to go ahead and insert the wood onto the right side as well. I need to feed this connection in a little bit at a time as I push the two pieces together. If the glue starts to cool, just pull the wires out of the way and go ahead and shove everything closed. Give that a full minute to cool down and then we'll worry about pushing the remaining wires into the boom. Now that the horizontal stabilizer has had a chance to cool down, I'm going to flip the assembly upside down. And using a barbecue skewer, I'm going to go ahead and push the wire in all the way. I'm going to go ahead and apply a small amount of glue here and over here on the other side. that's cooling down, we're going to go ahead and flip the plane over with the nose of the aircraft facing us. Earlier we had test fit two formers, one on the left and one on the right. Go ahead and grab those formers. We're going to go ahead and reinstall a former into each side. Go ahead and push the ESC back just a little bit for the time being and then go ahead and Get the former in one more time. 
make sure that the little crop mark at the bottom aligns perfectly with the seam. You can see I've got one layer of foam sticking out. Once that's in place, let's go ahead and apply a line of glue all the way around. Once we do that, we're going to wipe away the excess with a piece of scrap. Do the same thing on the other side. First we'll push the ESC out of the way. We'll line things up at the bottom. Once the fit looks good, let's go ahead and run a bead of glue all the way around. Be sure you've got a piece of scrap handy to wipe away the excess. Go and let that cool for about a minute, then we'll go on to the next step. Now we're going to go ahead and install the cowling. Go ahead and grab one of the cowlings. It doesn't matter which one. The two parts are identical. And for starters, we're going to line up the seam with this small tick mark at the bottom. This is just going to get us in the ballpark. Once we have this test fit, we may have to clock it one way or the other. It's very important that this cutout is lined up with this cutout. So let's go ahead and do a test fit. Okay, the seam looks good all the way around. I'm going to look at it from the front and make sure that everything's lined up correctly. What I'm wanting to ensure is that this rectangular cutout is lined up perfectly to the rectangular cutout behind it. Again, if necessary, you may have to clock this one way or the other, but this looks really good. Let's go ahead and pull the cowling off. We'll apply glue and put it back together. Go ahead and pull the cowling off. And before we apply glue, I'm going to go ahead and tear off several pieces of tape. I'm going to apply a heavy bead of glue all along the inside edge. Again, I'm going pretty heavy like we've done elsewhere, so I'll have plenty of time to position the part. Okay, before I start taping, I'm going to make sure that my square knockouts are lined up. I had to make just a slight adjustment. Now, anywhere the seam looks good, we're going to apply a piece of tape. Right here at the top looks really good. I'm going to shift things over just a little bit so the side looks good. Flip things over and check the bottom. As that's cooling down, we'll go ahead and do the other side. Let's go ahead and do a test fit. Alignment looks good. I'm going to pull this off, tear off some tape. Just like before, we're going to add a heavy bead of glue. and slide things together. Slight twist. That looks really good. And I'm applying tape anywhere the seam looks good. Okay, everything looks good. Now let's go ahead and add the superchargers. Now we're going to go ahead and glue the superchargers in place. In order to position the superchargers, lay a ruler across the boom. The edge of the ruler is even with the trailing edge of the wing. Right here along this seam that runs front to back, put a small cut. 
with a razor blade. That is right where the back of the supercharger goes. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue the supercharger right here. Visually, it's centered left to right, and we know that this is the back of the supercharger. So I'm going to flip this over, add a small line of glue, and we'll glue this in place. Now let's do the same on the other side. Just like before, I'm lining the ruler up to the trailing edge, making a small mark on the center line. Going to visually line up the supercharger left and right, and apply some glue. Let's let that cool down and move on to the next step. Let's go ahead and attach the linkage to the elevator. We're going to start with attaching the single arm onto the servo. This is the same arm that we used on the ailerons. Go ahead and grab that and the short screw and let's go ahead and get it installed. You'll notice that this slit is slightly offset from the servo. When installing the arm, make sure that it's pointing in the direction the slit is offset. Go ahead and screw it all the way in. Now using the pointed end of a barbecue skewer, go ahead and open up the slit just a little bit. You can flip the barbecue skewer around and open it up just a little bit more. We're going to test fit our control horn. Notice this control horn is different than the ones we used on the aileron. This one doesn't have the pill-shaped slot there at the bottom. Just like on the aileron, make sure that the hole is directly above the hinge. That looks really good right there. Go ahead and pull the control horn out of the way for a minute and grab your push rod. We're going to run the Z-bend of the push rod through the outermost hole in the servo arm. And go ahead and rotate the push rod to where it's pointing straight back. Go ahead and grab the push rod with a small pair of pliers directly above the hinge. And we're going to bend the push rod 90 degrees in the direction of the aircraft's right wing. Alright, once that's done, grab the push rod right at the 90 degree bend and we're going to bend the wire straight back. Okay, I'm going to look to make sure the Z-bend is directly over the hinge. That looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess. I'm going to run the Z-bend through the hole in my control horn. Test fit things. And as I'm test fitting, I'm making sure that my elevator is in a neutral position. You'll see that it's slightly high, so I'm going so to make an adjustment with the fit. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to pull the control horn out one last time and apply some glue. and reinsert. As it's cooling down, I'm holding the elevator in the neutral position. Once this cools down, we'll go ahead and go to the next step. Now that that's cooled down, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the power pods. For this build, we're going to be using the Flight Test 2218 radials. This is available from the Flight Test store as a twin CPAC V2. To build up the power pods, you're going to need two motors, two of the power pods, and two of the firewalls. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to begin by attaching the firewall to the power pod. Notice I've got this small rectangular window at the bottom right as you're facing the power pod. 
go ahead and apply glue to the face of the power pod. And glue the firewall in place. Firewall will be flush at the bottom and it will stick up slightly here at the top. Let that cool down for about 30 seconds and then we'll do the other one. Just like the first, we're going to position the firewall with the cutout at the bottom right as you're looking at it from the front. Again, make sure it's flush along the bottom. Set that off to the side and let that cool down. Once that's glued in place, we're going to go ahead and put a piece of tape across the front. The tape is going to really help keep the firewall in its place. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it on each side. I'm going to flip it upside down. And using a razor blade, I'm going to make a vertical cut at the corner. And I'll fold the sides in. And then we'll fold the front. Once that's done, go ahead and remove tape from the center circle. Very important that you get all the tape removed from this area. And also remove the tape from the square at the bottom right corner. To make starting the screws a little bit easier, go ahead and put a small puncture on these outermost small holes. Now let's do the same on the other side. Once that's done, let's go ahead and add the motors. Go ahead and position your motor where the wires are coming out the bottom right when you're looking at things from the front. Let's go ahead and feed the wires through the small rectangular hole at the bottom right. And pull the wires tight from the back. Once you do that, the holes should line up with the bracket on the back of the motor. To secure the motor to the firewall, we're going to use four of these wood screws included with your motor. Go ahead and insert the screw about halfway in, and we'll do the same on the other ones as well. Once all the screws are started, Press the motor up against the firewall and go ahead and snug all four of them down. Be careful not to strip out the firewall. Now let's do the same on the other motor. Once that's done, go ahead and grab your airframe. We're going to go ahead and connect the motors to the ESC and add the receiver. Now it's important to get the power pod on the correct side. In order to determine which is the correct side, go ahead and push the power pod up against the cowling. You'll notice that the angle will match the angle of the wing. So this is correct. Go ahead and pull the three wires from the ESC out of the front of the cowling. You may need a wire with a hook to grab it. Let's do the same on the other side. So you'll have three wires sticking out on both sides. Let's go ahead and connect the three wires from the ESC to the three wires on the motor. At this stage, it doesn't matter which order they're connected. Let's do the same on the other side. Now that the motors have been connected, we're going to go ahead and bind the receiver. The receiver we're going to be using is the Spectrum AR620. For this step, make sure your props are not installed. Go ahead and connect your battery to the power wire. 
holding down the bind button on the receiver, go ahead and plug the left motor into throttle 1. You'll notice that the orange light is flashing. This means it's in bind mode. For this setup, we're going to be using the Spectrum DX80. Over here on the left side, there's a button at the top that I'm going to hold down. This is the bind button. Holding down the bind button, I'm going to go ahead and power up. In order to bind, I need to move the receiver approximately three feet away from the receiver. Once you hear the chime, the binding is complete. Once I'm bound, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the second motor. Once the second motor chimes, we're going to go ahead and test the motor direction. In this video, we're only covering the basics for transmitter setup and programming. Check out the description below. You'll find a link that covers setup more thoroughly. The transmitter has already been set up with differential thrust. Now we're going to go ahead and check motor direction to ensure the props are spinning the correct way. Ideally what we want is the aircraft's left motor to be spinning clockwise as we're looking at it from the front. So let's go ahead and check that. Again, make sure you do not have your prop installed for this step. Okay, it looks like it's turning counterclockwise. So what we need to do is we need to switch two wires. And it doesn't matter which two wires you switch. Once the two wires have been switched, the motor will be reversed. That looks good. Let's go ahead and tape things up. Once the wires have been taped, we're going to go ahead and slide the power pod in. You're going to notice this step down. The step down is actually going to be resting on the underside of the wing. We're going to push the power pod in until these two verticals make contact with the leading edge of the wing. Make sure that you keep the ESC pulled upwards as you slide the power pod in. Go ahead and slide the power pod in until you feel it stop. All right, let's go ahead and do the other side. All right, looking at the motor from the front, we want the motor to be spinning in a counterclockwise direction. Looks like this one is going in the wrong direction also. Let's go ahead and switch two of the wires. Let's check direction. Okay, that looks correct. Let's go ahead and tape the wires. And we'll go ahead and install the power pod. Again, I'm making sure that I'm holding my ESC up so it doesn't bind. With both motors in place, let's just apply a small amount of glue along this edge and this edge and the bottom as well. Let's do the same on the other side. While the glue's cooling down, let's go ahead and hook up the elevator and the ailerons. Go ahead and find the aileron Y extension. We're going to plug that into channel number two. That is the default channel for ailerons. and then go ahead and find the extension for the elevator and we're going to plug that into channel 3 which is a default channel for elevator. 
Now that that's plugged in, we're going to go ahead and test direction. I'm going to go ahead and check the elevator first. When I pull the right stick backwards, I want the elevator to go up. Okay, it looks like the direction is correct, but you'll notice that the elevator looks a little bit high. Let's go ahead and make a sub-trim adjustment. In order to make a sub-trim adjustment, go ahead and press the roller on the right. This will bring up the functions list. Go ahead and go down to servo setup and click the roller. Scroll to the right to where travel is highlighted. Press the roller and go ahead and scroll over to the sub trim section. Press the roller again. Now we're going to cycle to elevator. Go ahead and click the roller. And now we can adjust the sub trim of the elevator. We need the elevator to go down just slightly. Now you can see that the elevator is flush with the trailing edge of the horizontal stabilizer. Once that's done, let's check the ailerons. Now let's go ahead and check ailerons. When I move the right hand stick to the right, the aileron on the right needs to go up. You can see that the aileron is going down. So we need to go ahead and reverse that. In order to reverse the ailerons, press the roller button on the right. This will bring up your functions list and let's scroll down to servo setup. Go ahead and scroll to the right and highlight travel. Press the roller once. And now let's scroll over to reverse. Press the button again. And let's scroll over to aileron. Once aileron is highlighted, hit your roller and that reverses it. Once it's been reversed, go ahead and back out. And now let's test it again. I'm going to move the right hand stick to the right and we want the aileron on the right to go up. That looks good. We're all set. Let's go ahead and install the vertical stabilizers. You'll notice that the scores are facing upwards. These are the scores that we had glued a little bit earlier. When we install the vertical stabilizers, we're going to want these scores towards the middle facing the servo. Let's go ahead and do a test fit. These are just going to slide over the horizontal stabilizer. They'll only go so far and then they'll hit the back of the boom. These need to be centered right along the center line of the boom. The position looks good, so I'm just going to move it slightly towards the center and I'm going to put a line of glue right along here. Go ahead and let this cool down for a full minute. Make sure that your vertical stabilizer is straight. You don't want it twisted one way or the other. Once that's cooled down, let's go ahead and apply glue to the other side and then we will apply glue on the underside on both sides of the vertical stabilizer as well. Make sure your vertical stabilizer is straight up and down. If needed, you can take a ruler to double check that you've got it perfectly vertical. Hold that for about 45 seconds while the glue cools down. Now let's do the same on the other side. Do a test fit. Looking to make sure it's right in line with this seam down the center of the boom. That looks good. I'm going to move it towards center just a little bit. Add a line of glue. And we'll go ahead and hold that in place for about a minute. Once that cools down, we'll go ahead and apply glue to the other side and then to the underside as well. Be sure to allow plenty of time for this side to cool down as well. Go ahead and grab these four parts. We're going to go ahead and do a test fit 
on the cowling. These two parts are identical, so it doesn't matter which one you grab. There's a crop mark at the bottom of this former. Let's go ahead and line that up with the seam at the bottom. And let's slide that over. You'll notice that it's probably going to be too tight. Since we've got a taper right here, we're going to need to cut a pretty deep bevel along the bottom. We're also going to need to cut a small bevel at the top. Let's go ahead and cut a bevel here at the bottom. And let's cut one at the top as well. The one at the top doesn't need to be quite as extreme. Okay, now let's go ahead and test fit. Checking my alignment at the bottom. My fit looks good. It looks like I took a little bit too much material at the bottom. That's okay. I'm just going to make sure and not take quite as much on the other side. Once I'm happy with the test fit, we're going to go ahead and glue this in place. Before we apply any glue, I'm going to go ahead and tear off four or five pieces of tape. As we've done elsewhere, I'm going to apply a very heavy bead of glue all the way around the edge. Check alignment and go ahead and install. Like on other parts, anywhere I see a seam that looks good, I'm going to put a piece of tape across it and then work my way around. Flip my airplane over so I can get to the bottom. I'm going to push the seam closed at the bottom and tape that as well. I can close that gap a little bit more. Looks like I'll have a little gap, but that's all right. That'll be on the bottom. I'll go ahead and put one more piece of tape across that to keep it held in place. And since that was popping open, I'm going to go ahead and put a little glue in. Flip the plane back over. I'm going to squirt a little glue down along the bottom. That'll help hold that in place. I know it's a little bit hard to see. I just need to make sure that I get glue in there quickly. Let's go ahead and start with a bevel up at the top. It's going to take a small amount of material. I'm going to go ahead and cut a bevel at the bottom. I'm not going to take near as much as I did on the other side. Hopefully it will have a little bit tighter fit. Okay, you can see how much I took that time. And you can see how much I took the first time. Let's do a test fit. Okay, that fit looks a lot better. I'm happy with that, so we're going to go ahead and glue it. First we'll pull the tape off. Go ahead and apply glue all the way around. Line it at the bottom with a crop mark. Apply tape anywhere the seam looks good. I'm going to tear off any excess tape that's sticking out past the end. Do 
the same on the other side. All right, let's flip our plane back over. Now we're going to install the cowling intakes. Go ahead and break the piece off the bottom with the intakes. And we're going to put this at the bottom. And we're not going to worry about lining it up to the seam. What I'm more concerned with is that the top of this piece is perfectly parallel with the power pod. I'm going to apply a pretty heavy bead of glue because it may take a little bit to get this piece exactly where we need it. Insert it. Make sure that it's aligned correctly. And then I'm just going to gently pinch it at the top. Hold this for two minutes. There's a lot of stress here and here. And if it isn't fully cooled, it's going to pop apart. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and break off the piece opposite to the first one you tore off. This is going to get glued here at the top. There's no crop marks to line anything up to, so just like this bottom piece, looking at it from the front, it needs to be aligned to the power pod. That looks good. Let's go ahead and glue it in place. cool for about a minute. Now go ahead and break off one side or the other and we're just going to fit this part right between the top and bottom piece. If the top and bottom piece are aligned correctly this one will drop in exactly where it needs to be. Let that cool for about 30 seconds and we'll do the other side. Hold that for about 30 seconds and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and remove all four intakes from your kit. We're going to go ahead and lay them out before we start peeling paper. I want you to take special notice that over on one side you're going to see a very small dash. You can see it here, you can see it here, and you can see one here. This set has been mirrored. I've got the dash here, here, and here. I've got this second set laid out. All the dashes are lined up here, here, and here. And this last intake is mirrored with the dashes here, here, and here. Let's go ahead and peel off the top layer. Be very careful that you don't flip the parts around. Let's just go ahead and peel the paper with them laying flat on the table. Once that's been done, we're going to work with one group of three at a time. So being very careful to keep all the pieces together, go ahead and move each group of three that we're not working on off to the side. What we're going to do now is we're going to flip these parts over and we're going to roll them just like we've done elsewhere in the video. Now these three parts are going to be glued together. Again, I'm checking to make sure that the dash here, here, and here are all facing one direction. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a test fit between these two parts. Once they're completed, they're going to be shaped about like this. And you can see I've got a little bit of a gap right here. So I'm going to remove a small amount of material from this side. 
You can also remove material from this side as well. It doesn't really matter. And we'll test fit again. Okay, that looks good. When I glue these together, it generally takes three separate beads of glue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tear off three pieces of tape, and then we'll go ahead and glue these two pieces together. I'm gonna apply glue about a third of the way from one end, and the paper on this side is gonna overlap the paper on this side. Hold this for about 45 seconds, and then you'll be able to put a piece of tape across the seam. All right, once that's done, I'm gonna flip it upside down. I'm gonna apply glue to about a third. Flip it back over, and kind of scissor that closed where the glue is squirting towards the inside. The seam looks good. I'm going to put a piece of tape across that when you can. And we'll glue the last section. Flipping it back over. Apply glue. Close that up. And apply tape. It comes together a little bit easier when you go ahead and bend it into its final shape. Let that cool down for about a minute and then we'll go ahead and attach this piece. Go ahead and tear off three small pieces of tape. And let's check the fit between these two parts. Okay, it looks like we've got a pretty good gap in there. So we're gonna remove a little bit of material. And let's test fit that again. All right, that looks good. I think I can glue this about halfway. Let that cool down just a bit, and then you can put a piece of tape across it. Once that's cooled down, let's go ahead and glue the rest of it. After about 45 seconds, you can add a piece of tape. As that's cooling down, let's go ahead and do the other three exactly the same way. Once everything's had a chance to cool down, we're going to be adding a bevel at the top and at the bottom. I'm going to be going in with a razor blade and cutting a very shallow bevel. This will help them fit really snugly to the boom. So you can see how much material I've removed. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom. That looks good. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the remaining three. Once that's done, Go ahead and grab your airframe and we'll glue the intakes in place. Let's start with the airframe upside down. We're going to go ahead and remove tape from the trailing edge of the wing to the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer. Again, be very careful when removing tape that you don't remove the paper underneath. Once tape's been removed, let's flip the plane back over. If you look closely along the top of the boom, you're going to notice four reference marks. One here, one here, one here, and one here. These reference marks will help you correctly position the intakes. Each boom will have a left intake and a right intake. If you look closely, I've got one of each in my hand. You'll notice that at the center, you'll see those little tiny crop marks. The crop marks are going to be facing downward. Let's go ahead and start with the outside one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to align the back of the intake with this rear crop mark. 
in the front of the intake to this forward crop mark. Okay, that position looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead of glue along here and we're going to glue the top of the intake in place. Looks like I've got a little excess glue. I'm going to grab a piece of scrap and remove that. Hold this in place for about 45 seconds and then we'll do the other side. Checking to make sure that these little crop marks are down. And I'm going to do a test fit here at the top. I'm aligned good at the front. And I'm aligned good at the back, so I'm going to apply a little bit of glue. Hold that in place for about 45 seconds. And we'll rotate the airplane around and do the other side. Just like before, I'm going to put my small crop marks to the center. I'm going to set this one over to the inside. And we'll start with the outside one. Alignment looks good. And we'll hold that in place while the glue cools. Now let's go ahead and do the inside one. Test fit looks good. I am gonna, I am gonna pull the tape back just a little bit. Once this cools down, we're gonna flip the plane over and do the same thing on the bottom. Let's go ahead and flip the plane over. And we'll glue the bottom of the intakes. Just like on the top, there's reference marks here, 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 and here. Let's do a test fit on this inside one. That looks good. Let that cool for 45 seconds. We'll do the other one. Now we'll do the other side. Test fit looks good. Once that cools down, we'll do the other side just the same. Once that's cooled down, we're going to go ahead and close in the remaining section of the fuselage underneath the wing. Go ahead and pull the following parts out of your kit. These parts will be labeled B6, B7, and B8. Let's start by removing one layer of paper. Be sure and remove the side with the label on it. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and roll these parts and then glue them together. These will be shaped just like all the other parts we've done. All right, once that's done, we're gonna glue these three pieces together. And I'm gonna start with a quick test fit. Okay, my seam looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and tear off a couple pieces of tape I think I'll be able to glue this together in one pass. Once it's together, you can go ahead and put a piece of tape across the seam. Put a piece on the other side also. And let's test fit this other piece. Okay, that seam looks good. 
going to go ahead and tear off a couple pieces of tape. I believe we can attach these two pieces with two passes of glue. I'll start by applying glue to one side, let it cool down, then we'll do the other. I'll let that cool for about 45 seconds, then I'll put a piece of tape across. We'll go ahead and glue the other side. We'll hold this for 45 seconds and go ahead and add a piece of tape. As that's cooling, go ahead and grab your airframe and we're going to turn the aircraft upside down on the tabletop. Once these three pieces have cooled down, we're going to go ahead and close in the underside of the fuselage. Let's go ahead and start with a test fit. And if you notice, I've got a pretty big gap down here at the bottom. And that's okay. This piece shouldn't be glued in place. So to get rid of that gap, go ahead and squeeze this together slightly. Let's try test fitting again. You can see that that gap is starting to close up. There we go, that looks good. Now let's go ahead and glue one half of the fuselage together. Go ahead and get a couple strips of tape ready. Go ahead and apply a heavy bead of glue. And go ahead and stick things together. Give this a full minute and a half to cool before moving on to the other side. Let's go ahead and test fit the other side. Got to squeeze this in just a little bit. There we go. That looks good. And go ahead and apply glue along this edge. Use a piece of tape to remove this blob of glue. Just like on the other side, I'm going to let this cool down for a full minute and a half. It's under quite a bit of pressure, so you really have to hold it in place until the glue is fully cooled. Go ahead and center this point up where the wings meet up. It may have to be pushed one way or the other. I'm going to move this over just slightly. Okay, that's where I'm going to want to glue the underside of the fuselage. I'm going to back it out of the way. Put a little bit of glue right here. Move this over and press down. Be careful not to get your thumb in the glue. Let that cool down and then we'll go ahead and close up these gaps on either side. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and remove the tape. With the tape out of the way, go ahead and squeeze the sides together. You'll notice that this gap on the underside of the wing is going to close. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep pressure on it and we're going to run a bead of glue all the way along this edge. Make sure you give yourself plenty of time to allow the glue to fully cool down. The foam is under a lot of pressure and it's going to want to spring open unless the glue has had time to fully cool. I'm going to let this cool for a full two minutes. Once that's cooled down, go ahead and flip your airplane around and let's do the other side. Just like on the other side, I'm going to squeeze things together. Once the gap is closed up, I'm going to go ahead and apply glue all the way along this edge. Give that a full two minutes to cool down.
Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and tear all the tape off the underside, including the clear Gorilla Tape we used to reinforce the booms. Now that all the masking tape and Gorilla Tape has been removed off the bottom, we're going to go ahead and add a bead of glue on either side of the boom. We're going to add a line here and one on the other side. And then we'll do the same thing on the other boom. Before we add a line of glue, I'm going to make sure that this is a nice straight line. It looks like it's bowed out just a little bit, so I'm going to squeeze things here in the middle. Now it looks like I've got a straight line. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and run a small bead of glue all the way down that seam. I'm going to keep a little bit of pressure here in the center while the glue cools down. Give that a minute and a half and we'll do the other side. Now that I've glued this side, I'm going to glue this other side. That side looks good. I don't think I'm going to have to hold it in place. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the plane around and do the other side. Okay, I'm going to check my line. It looks like it's bowed out a little bit right here. I'm going to squeeze that lightly and add a bead of glue. Once that cools, I'll do the other side. Once that cools down, we're going to go ahead and flip the aircraft back over. We're going to go ahead and remove the tape add the props, and then add the guns. With the aircraft right side up, go ahead and remove any remaining masking tape and Gorilla Tape. Now that all the tape has been removed, we're going to go ahead and add one more line of glue on each wing. If you remember, we've already added a bead of glue here. So we're going to go ahead and add a bead of glue here towards the wing tip. Now let's do the same on the other side. As that's cooling down, let's go ahead and add the props. Let's go ahead and start with the left motor. If you remember, this is set up to turn clockwise when looking at it from the front. And now we'll go ahead and mount a counterclockwise one on the right motor. Now that the props have been installed, it's time for my very favorite part of the whole build. It's time to add guns. Lots of guns. Now there's two reasons why I like adding guns to this particular aircraft. First of all, the aircraft just doesn't look right unless you've got five machine guns sticking out the nose. The second reason is this is the very last step. Once we get the guns installed, this thing is ready to fly. For this step, you're going to need a barbecue skewer and the nose of the airplane. You'll notice this barbecue skewer is black. I went ahead and spray painted it. You can also make it black with a permanent magic marker or a paint pen, or you can just leave it unpainted. If you look at the nose of the aircraft, you're going to see five holes. This is where the five machine guns are going to go. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to run the skewer in. You'll notice it's the dull side. I'm going to go ahead and run this straight in. I'm going to do that on each hole. This will make sure that each of the guns points straight forward. If I don't do this, the guns are going to want to point up. You can see I'm bending the foam down just slightly. All right, once that's done, I'm going to set the nose off to the side just for a second. I'm going to start by first cutting the skewer into four inch and a quarter segments. The way I do that is I put my razor blade at the inch and a quarter mark. I press down and I roll the skewer. This will create a cut all the way around. I'll roll it back and forth a couple times and then I'll break it. Go ahead and cut a second one. This is also at an inch and a quarter. 
and we'll do the same on the third and the fourth one. The last one is going to be cut a little bit shorter. We're going to cut it off right at an inch. Okay, hold on to that short one. When looking at the nose of the aircraft from the front, we're going to insert this short one all the way over to the right as we're looking at it. We're going to push that all the way in until it bottoms out against a former inside here. Go ahead and grab one of the inch and a quarter segments and we're going to put it in the one that's all the way to the left. This one will go all the way in until it hits the former as well. Let's move over one and we're going to push this one in but not quite as far as this one all the way over on the left. Then we'll go ahead and push this one in. And you'll notice that this one is sticking out the furthest. This one is a little bit shorter and then this one is even shorter yet. Just leaves the one in the center at the bottom and we'll just push it in where you've got about a half inch sticking out. So you can see how they're kind of staggered just a little bit. All right, once we've got these things test fit, we're gonna pull each one out, put in a drop of glue, and then set them in for good. We'll let the guns cool down just for a minute or so while the glue's cooling. Go ahead and take your receiver. We're going to push it up inside. All right, let's go ahead and put the nose back on. And with that, our P38 is complete. As good as this looks on the table, it looks way better up in the air. What do you say we go find some batteries and get this thing flying?